Good evening, and thank you for joining us tonight. We're reading a story from the Arabian Nights, and this story is titled The Tale of the Ox and the Donkey. There was a prosperous and wealthy merchant who lived in the countryside and labored on a farm. He owned many camels and herds of cattle and employed many men. And he had a wife and many grown up as well as little children. The merchant was taught the language of the beasts on condition that if he revealed his secret to anyone, he would die. Therefore, even though he knew the language of every kind of animal, he did not let anyone know for fear of death. One day, as he sat with his wife beside him and his children playing before him, he glanced at an ox and a donkey he kept at the farmhouse, tied to adjacent troughs, and heard the ox say to the donkey, Watchful one, I hope that you are enjoying the comfort and the service you are getting. Your ground is swept and watered, and they serve you feed you sifted barley, and offer you clear, cool water to drink. I, on the contrary, am taken out to plow in the middle of the night. They clamp on my neck something they call yoke and plow, push me all day under the whip to plow the field, and drive me beyond my endurance until my sides are lacerated and my neck is flayed. They work me from night time to night time, take me back in the dark, offer me beans soiled with mud and hay mixed with chaff, and let me spend the night lying in urine and dung. Meanwhile, you rest on well-swept, watered and smoothed ground with a clean trough full of hay. You stand in comfort, save for the rare occasion when our master, the merchant, rides you to do a brief errand and returns. You are comfortable while I am weary. You sleep while I keep awake. When the ox had finished, the donkey turned to him and said, Greenhorn, they were right in calling you ox, for you ox harbor no deceit, malice, or meanness. Being sincere, you exert and exhaust yourself to comfort others. Have you not heard the saying, out of bad luck they hastened on the road? You go into the field from early morning to endure your torture at the plow to the point of exhaustion. When the plowman takes you back and ties you to the trough, you go on butting and beating with your horns, kicking with your hooves and bellowing for the beans until they toss them to you. Then... You begin to eat. Next time, when they bring them to you, don't eat or even touch them, but smell them. Then draw back and lie down on the, gra on the hay and straw. If you do this, life will be better and kinder to you, and you will find relief. As the ox listened, he was sure that the donkey had given him good advice. He thanked him, commended him to God, and invoked his blessing on him, and said, May you stay safe from harm, watchful one. All of this conversation took place, daughter, while the merchant listened and understood. On the following day, the plowman came to the merchant's house, and, taking the ox, placed the yoke upon his neck and worked him at the plow, but the ox lagged behind. The plowman hit him, but following the donkey's advice, the ox, dissembling, fell on his belly, and the plowman hit him again. Thus the ox kept getting up and falling until nightfall, when the plowman took him home and tied him to the trough. But this time the ox did not bellow or kick the ground with his hoofs. Instead, he withdrew away from the trough. Astonished, the plowman brought him his beans and fodder, but the ox only smelled the fodder and pulled back and lay down at a distance with the hay and straw, complaining till the morning. When the plowman arrived, he found the trough as he had left it, 
full of beans and fodder, and saw the ox lying on his back, hardly breathing, his belly puffed, and his legs raised in the air. The plowman felt sorry for him and said to himself, By God, he did seem weak and unable to work. Then he went to the merchant and said, Master, last night the ox refused to eat or touch his fodder. The merchant who knew what was going on, said to the plowman, Go to the wily donkey, put him to the plow, and work him hard until he finishes the ox's task. The plowman left, took the donkey, and placed the yoke on his back, on his neck. Then he took him out, out to the field and drove him with blows until he finished the ox's work, all the while driving him with blows and beating him until his sides were lacerated and his neck was flayed. At nightfall he took him home, barely able to drag his legs under his tired body and his drooping ears. Meanwhile, the ox spent his day resting. He ate all his food, drank his water, and lay quietly, chewing his cud in comfort. All day long he kept praising the donkey's advice and invoking God's blessing on him. When the donkey came back at night, the ox stood up to greet him, saying, Good evening, watchful one. You have done me a favor beyond a description, for I have been sitting in comfort. God bless you for my sake. Seething with anger, the donkey did not reply, but said to himself, All this happened to me because of my miscalculation. I would be sitting pretty, but for my curiosity. If I don't find a way to return this ox to the former situation, I will perish. Then he went to his trough and lay down, while the ox continued to chew his cud and invoke God's blessing on him. You, my daughter, will likewise perish because of your miscalculation. Desist, sit quietly, and don't expose yourself to peril. I advise you out of compassion for you. She replied, Father, I must go to the king, and you must give me to him. He said, Don't do it. She insisted, I must. He replied, If you don't desist, I will do to you what the merchant did to his wife. She asked, Father, what did the merchant do to his wife? And he replied, With the tale of the 